Hey, what's up everybody? Persnickety here, and welcome to part 7 of the Rhyme walkthrough. So, you're gonna wake up. Remember we faced off against the Vulture, and we got washed up at sea, and then now, um, or, or you know, there was like a flashback and whatnot. Point is, you're gonna wake up in this room with a lot of different doorways, and it turns out this is sort of like a maze. So you see right here, I went through the doorway on my right, I follow the path, and then I ended up emerging uh, right back into the same room just through a different doorway. So what I did was I just backtracked to get back to the starting point. Now, I don't know what it is if there's a specific trick to get past this, but I can tell you this. First off, you're going to have to at least go through one faulty door, but second off, you'll notice that there's these two doors right in the middle here. So I went through one, and now I'm headed towards the second. I can tell you that on both of my playthroughs, the correct door was always one of those middle to lower floor doors. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt, but I guarantee if you just run around and go through the doors for a bit, eventually you should find the right one. It shouldn't take too long, but I'll just tell you that for me, the correct door always ended up being one of those two lower middle floors, uh, or lower floor middle doors. Uh, Anyway, you're going to come now to this location, and you're going to be running, and you'll notice that it just goes on infinitely. And so after about maybe 20 seconds of running, you can turn around, and that's when the game will, you know, pull a little magic trick on you. And you can run over to this wall, and you'll see this keyhole here, and you can peek through it. And this is actually the first of a new type of collectible. Uh, these are the keyholes. It will show you in a second, so there are eight in the game total. Um, and then once you get that keyhole, again, you'll just turn around and run in the opposite direction and it will no longer go on infinitely. Instead, you'll be able to see an end to the path. And so, uh, as you might have guessed, the title of this video, now it makes sense, the title of this video is going to be something along the lines of the maze and the caverns. And that is because the first part here is really just kind of one big maze. Um, and then, of course, later on in the video, we're going to be coming across some various caverns. Um, this part of the game is, for me, a little boring. I felt like it was just drawing on. Like, I, I felt like I didn't really have an objective here. I was just running aimlessly. Um, and I mentioned this in, in a couple of the other videos. Uh, the game is starting, at this point, to lose its flair for me. It started off really fun. And I can see that they're trying to introduce new elements, you know, we started off on this beautiful island, then we transitioned to a desert, and then now we are in some sort of nice, uh, almost ancient looking cave system. Um, and so, the, you know, it's trying, but, but at the very heart of it, the, the puzzles just aren't that challenging, and the plot is still very loose, and... Um, the, you know, the gameplay is just growing a bit stale, at least that's my opinion. And don't get me wrong, I'm still having fun with the game. It's still an enjoyable game, it's still a relaxing game, but um, in a sense I would say it doesn't have a lot of replay value. Un unless you really want to go after all of the collectibles, there's not really any reason to play this game twice. At least that's so far my feeling towards it. Um, but anyway, in case you get lost here, you're basically just going to swim, and the, the path is pretty easy to follow. Just kind of, you'll, you'll see these air bubbles positioned every once in a while. Just follow the air bubbles, and that will kind of tell you that you're on the right path. And then, of course, try to keep looking up, because obviously you can't stay down here forever. Um, so just try to keep looking up until you see the exit, which will be indicated by, you know, some light shining through the surface of the water. Or something like that and then of course there is a big supply of air bubbles down here so you shouldn't have to worry about suffocating or anything like that um, and so this this whole section of the game uh, in terms of making a walkthrough for it it was kind of awkward because you'll see not in this or I think at the end of this video but mainly in the next two videos um, we're going to be doing something with this giant eye robot thing and that will make sense later on but um, the whole level from this part here until the end took about 48 minutes and I didn't want to publish a video that long so instead I split it into three parts and this first part is just a bit awkward because like I said there's no real objective here it, we're just kinda running and so I had to give it the best name I could which was the maze in the caverns but 
you're going to see these figures here, and we've seen these figures earlier in the game. They first appeared in at the beginning of the desert section. The weird part is, now they are completely different. So if you remember, when we first came across them, they were actually afraid of us. They, they ran away, and then they would disappear, and they wouldn't let you near them. Now, that's changed. Now... Um, they are evil. They, they will approach you and they will basically suck your soul out of you, um, which if you get close enough you will experience that firsthand. Um, and yeah, it, it, it was kind of weird and that's, that's again another one of my points. I, I, I've been stressing this throughout the walkthrough. Um, games like this that don't present you with a clear narrative Sometimes that frustrates me, and that's a perfect example. You know, I want to know. I want to know why are these why are these beings that were all that used to be somewhat friendly, if not timid and afraid, why are they all of a sudden hostile? Um, you know, is it the change of location? Is it because when we were out in the desert, they don't like that, but now that we're in these kind of close con, you know, close uh, conduct caves, they're, they're they've changed their attitude, they've changed their personality. I don't know, and the the problem is. I, I want to know, you know, because that's what playing a video game is. You want to know what's going on with the story. Um, and I feel like with these types of games that, that don't present you with a clear narrative, that's the risk they face is that not every viewer is going to fully understand the story and then they'll be left with, you know, an unsatisfactory experience. Um, but of course, I haven't beaten the game yet, so I can't speak fully on that matter. I can just say that at this point, it's kind of bothering me. But I haven't beaten the game yet, so who knows? Maybe everything will be cleanly wrapped up at the end of the game. Um, another thing is, I also... I, I have no idea how far I am into this game. There's no sort of tracking system or percentage system. I feel like at this point I would have to be about halfway through, maybe a little more. But I have no way of knowing that, uh, especially because um, there there's not any full walkthroughs yet online to to help me along and show me like how far I am. Um, but that's okay. We'll just get through one video at a time, and everything should be fine. Now, anyway, you're going to uh, come to this area here, and you'll kind of meet up with the fox again, and. So, basically what we just did is we conquered the maze and then we got through the caverns. Uh, so the rest of this video is basically, like I said, this is kind of an awkward video that just didn't fit in with anything else. Um, but you're gonna see, I think we're going to be introduced to the eye robots in this video. And you can actually see straight ahead of me right now, um, there is a statue. There's these statues that look like they have giant eyes on top. Those statues are actually representations of the iRobots that I'm talking about. And keep in mind, I every every word I'm using to define things in this game, like I've been using phrases in past videos like orbs and essence and yelling and and uh, viewing altars um, and iRobots, these are all these are all ma names I made up because again, they aren't given names. So or at least they're not given names directly to us. Uh, so all the all the phrases you hear me saying are completely made up but anyway we are going to come back down into these caverns and what you're going to see now is the first kind of indicator of these robots so if you look on the ground they're actually all strewn about uh, but they are lifeless and so if you pick up one of these blue orbs carry it over and yell the signal will you kind of see right there reactivate the robots core um, however that one was too weak to sustain any life but I believe the next one, that will be different, and you'll get to see your very first iRobot in action. So you see, you go over here, and you yell, and then this guy will, um, this guy right here will come to life. So from here, uh, you're just going to be following. You're just going to follow the robot. And we are going to return to this location. You're going to see that in the next couple of videos, we basically um, we basically backtrack all over the place because 
What's going to happen is we are going to accompany this robot, but this is going to be very short-lived. He's basically just going to unlock the next area for us. In the next video, we are going to be building an iRobot um, from scratch, basically. Because you can see that all these ones are old and, and almost dying and stuff. Um, Alright, so unfortunately our friend there has did not have enough energy to sustain his life, um, but he did show us exactly what I was about to tell you guys. He showed us what to expect in the next upcoming part. So first we are going to be building our own iRobot, and then in the video after that we are going to uh, basically resurrect an army of iRobots that will accompany us later on in the journey. But before that, we just have to run through these caverns one more time. And again, you can see that these, these beings that we've encountered early in the game, they are now chasing us instead of running away from us. And if you let one get too close, it will essentially um, suck your soul away, which you can see evidence of if you're playing the game for yourself. But to defeat them, at least momentarily, you're going to run up to them with a blue orb and then yell, and the signal will destroy them. Um, that won't last forever. They can come back, and they do come back pretty quickly, so you're going to want to make sure you don't linger for too long or anything like that. Um, now, there's going to be one right here. This one's tricky, so what you're going to want to do is drop down and kind of lure this guy away. Lure him as far as you can and just go in a big circle. Once you get him far enough, you're going to run over to the orb, pick it up as fast as you can, and yell in it as fast as you can. Because you see here, he actually started to suck my soul, but because I was able to yell in it first, I was able to destroy him. So that one is pretty time sensitive. you got to do that relatively quickly, but then the rest of them should not serve much of a threat at all. And so, we're basically going to make our way out of these caverns and like I said a lot of this a lot of what we're doing now we're just going to be backtracking later on so a, a lot of these locations get used to them because you're going to see them again in the near future um, when you when you climb up here just run kind of ring around the rosy around this pillar here to evade that guy and then jump up to the ledge here now there are a lot of monsters in this section which it looks like you need to destroy them but you don't really you only need uh, you don't need to destroy them to get through the game. So you see here, like, I decided to destroy a couple of these guys, but they ended up basically coming right back. Um, these guys are, you, you, I, I'm guessing that they're hiding collectibles. So I'm guessing that a lot of these guys, you don't have to kill them unless you want to get the collectibles. So you can see here that they're guarding that doorway down there. I'm not even going to go near that doorway. Um, again, if I was going after the collectibles, I would have a huge hunch that there is probably a collectible in that doorway. But because I'm not, uh, because I'm not going to be going after the collectibles in this walkthrough, I'm just going to leave it be. So in fact, yeah, you can see the collectible right there, um, and you can see how even if I use that orb, uh, not all of them get killed. So I will leave those puzzles up to you. They shouldn't be too difficult. You probably just have to use your brain a little bit, but uh, again, I'm just not going after the collectibles in this walkthrough, so I'm going to skip that part and make my way along the correct path, and and that's pretty much it, guys. That will bring us to the end of the video, and it will be a lot more exciting in the next couple of videos when we get a lot of hands-on action with the iRobot, so thanks for watching. See you then.